Hey guys, how you all doing? My name is BRT Cobra, and today I'm going to show you how to create a dedicated server for a set of Corsa Competizioni, the simple and easy way using just a server creation tool instead of the usual JSON files. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here we go. All right, guys. So first, let's go grab that new server creation UI tool, and simply the web address will be in the video description, directing you to racedepartment.com. Here you will need to log in to download the file, but don't worry about that. Race Department do some great stuff. You can share setups, mods, and even join private organized racing, clean racing, and it's fantastic. So once you're logged in, you will be greeted with this here, this page. You can see the actual tool here, nice and simple looking to use. Simply click the download link here. Once downloaded, you'll see ACC dedicated server.zip. I would like to thank Martin Vindis for creating this fantastic job. All credit goes to him. Okay, so now to install the folder. Nice and simple, this one. I've moved it to my desktop. It should be in your download section. Simply extract the folder. We'll do this in real time so it's nice and easy for you to see. Now it will say replace for me because I already have it. Inside the folder, you'll have the .x, you'll have the changelog and the readme. The readme simply tells you to extract this archive to a set of course a competizione server folder and then run the .x. It's that simple. However, what I'm going to do, and this is the way that I did it, I just copied the .x. So click, right click that, copy it, open Steam, right click on a set of course a competizione, properties local files and browse local files now the reason i do it this way is because like me your game may not be installed on the c drive so this is the easiest way to find the folder quickly in here you will see the server folder here double click it go inside and you can see that if i right click i paste it in here uh, I, it will tell me to replace i've already done it but yours will appear like this here and then Simply double click it and the server will appear. Nice and easy install. Right, so let's put this launcher to the side and let's talk about port forwarding and how to do it. First thing you're gonna to need to do is open your router web address to access the settings and to do the port forwarding. To work out how to do that, it should be on the back of your router. There should be a web address or you can contact your ISP or you can do it this way. Click File Explorer, go to Network, and it should show up in Network. If it doesn't, it may have a message at the top saying Turn on Network Sharing. Turn it on, and then it should show up. So I'm going to double click where it says BT Home Hub. And then that will open up the web address, and now I can see my settings. I will go to Advanced Settings. You will always need to do this. And look for something called Port Forwarding. Here for me, it's here. It will then ask me to sign into my router. If you don't know your password, just simply look on the back of your router. It should tell you. So I'm going to log into my router now and enter my password. And now we're good to go. Okay, so that brings me to the port forwarding page. Now what I'll need to do, and what you guys will need to do is just pull aside that page. Pull aside the server creation tool. And you'll see UD p port and tcp port defaults udp are 9231 and tcp is 9232 now you need to change this this is not something you want to keep this is for this is the kunos default ports but you don't really want to uh, do the same ports as obviously it has access to your pc and then it, it's not 100% safe. You need to create your own ports. I'm going to use these ports just as an example and I will change them later. But just to show you what to do here, I am going to show you the UDP port. Let's copy it. And I'm going to put here in my router, create new port forwarding rule. Here I should call it ACC. Then it will say select device for me. So I will select my PC. But you may need to add your IPv4 address, not the 6. Do not enter the IPv6 address. You need IPv4 because they're connecting direct to your PC. To do that, you will simply open up the start, type in CMD, open this, and then type in here 
IP config. I'm typing slowly because I've got my steering wheel in the way. So IP config, press enter. And then you get your IPv4 address line and you type these numbers in here. So for me, it's this one. You'll type those into your device here. So you can show like either this or you can show IP like that. So anyway, UDP ports, let's go. So I'm going to copy the default ones for now. Just copy and paste them all in. They go in every single slot here. Then select UDP set plus. And now I'm going to do another row here. This is going to be the TCP. So again, copy, paste, copy, paste. And that's TCP. Now, like I said, you want to change these. Do not use these. So just add that. Save. That's it. That That's the port forwarding done. It, it, for me, it's that simple. But definitely change these. I will do server name. We need to do a test server here. So BRT. Let's just go with Cobra. BRT Cobra. This is the, the fun bit. This is the bit that's quite easy. So join password. Um, if you want public in, don't put a password. If you want it private, put a password. Admin password. You're going to want to put something just for you because you want to be an admin entry list for car um, spectators and so on we're going to ignore that max car slots I have 20 with a safety rating of 47 now the two are linked safety rating is very important if you have it on 47 the majority of the people will be able to join the server but you can only host around 20 cars if you turn it up to 70 you can then host up to say 40 50 cars however not many people have a safety rate of 70 so you're kind of alienating people away from it and it's going to be less popular so try and keep your safety rating around 40 47 racecraft requirement i said it to not required same with um of other settings i like to i like to set up my server so that it's accessible for everybody so people can join that way you get the max people in you can always kick people if they act like fools so we've done max connections is on 50 udp port tcp we've done that uh race locked you can click that i mean it tells you here if disabled the server will allow joining uh during a race if it's ticked then nobody can join when the race starts and so on and everything here is explained pretty much for the majority at least anyway so these the only one i use is register to lobby that's it you can have a randomized track however everybody has to leave the server for it to change track so i just leave it unticked because what's the point if everybody has to leave you may as well just tell them everybody to leave and change it yourself driving aids i tend to make it again accessibility is the word here you want it to be accessible i have uh, auto pit limiter allowed and these ones here but i don't have things like ideal line and auto steering i disable those we don't want that kind of you don't want that kind of level in in the lobby really now for the event options pretty simple top here top left we've got uh, the whole entire track roster here i'm going to go with kyle army because i am going to test the server after we've done this um pre-race wait time i just put them on 60 you can change them this is all experimentation just fiddle with these settings until you're happy with what you've done uh, pit stop windows mandatory pit stops you can select those and uh, max total driving time and so on and it's it's so i mean it's self-explanatory all of it here what isn't explained though is the track conditions green fast and optimum to do this for a green track you would need to set a friday for a fast track a saturday an optimum a sunday and it's also determined by time and cloud coverage and night day everything it's quite complicated but the general rule of thumb here is friday is green saturday is fast and sunday is optimum uh, down here we've got the weather conditions so ambient temp i keep it around 22 it keeps the track temp of around 30 mid mid 30s cloud coverage goes up to 1.0 1.0 being maximum coverage i have it on 0.3 so not too cloudy rain level just turn it up for lots of rain down for no rain then the randomness you can put it on whatever you want have it change weather while you're driving 
that's pretty much it guys that is pretty much it all we got left to do now is to click start stop server now when you click this the firewall window should come up you need to allow it through the firewall or it will not work make sure you look out for that for me it's already done so i'm going to click it now the server started and it says uh waiting for drivers let's boot up a set of courser because there's still one more thing we need to talk about very important if you can't see your server okay so i'm into the multiplayer section of a set of courser now I've had people say to me, Cobra, um, people see my server, they can join my server, but I can't see it and I can't join it. If that happens to you here, simply click LAN server and it will show up here and then connect. That way, if they can see it in the server list and join, you join through LAN and you'll still be in the same server. So just bear that in mind. So let's test the server. Let's click uh, refresh list here. Uh, we're going to type in BRT Cobra again quite slow because the wheel is right in my way and I'm going to click enter and there it is okay so this has worked that's good news the reason I know it's worked is because you can see a number next to the ping so it's at 13 ms and if I click connect it will connect no problems it was actually pretty damn fast as well um, I could wait here and test and see if somebody joins but it could be a while you never know somebody may never join oh somebody joined okay so we know it's working so okay guys that's it i'm gonna wrap it up here i hope this video helps you if you have any questions leave a comment below i will try my best to answer if i can and yeah thank you for watching thank you for your support if you want to see more videos like this hit the subscribe button click the bell notification icon for future notifications of future videos and thank you very much i shall see you in the next one bye bye